welcome back to my Commodore 64 coding video series. So following on from the previous video about profile guided disassembly, I had a crazy idea. What if we look at Elite's line drawing code, try to disassemble it with this new tool and relocate it and use it in a new program file. So everyone should be really familiar with Elite. It's one of these classic games. I looked at it in a previous video and already found where the line draw is. It's at B49D. So all we need to do now is that when we have a look at the line draw routine, look up in the top right hand corner there in the debug graphics map where my mouse pointer is. And as I use the my monitor debugger to step into each iteration of the line draw code, you can see how Elite draws lines for the new frame and then once the new frame has been drawn it starts erasing those lines and then it repeats the process over and over and over again. This is why we get the flickery line draw and the line draw is basically using an EOR instruction to draw pixels or remove those pixels that it's just drawn. So after saving out the whole memory of Elite as it's running in the emulator, I'm going to load it into the tool. So we know that the line draw uses zero page memory locations 6B, 6C, 6D and 6E for XY and XY coordinates on the screen. I'll put a link to the uh, debugging notes as well in the video description below. But basically I'm loading the saved game into the tool there we go, I load it there. I write the memory with some initial values. The zero page and the VIC chip registers are set up. I also fill the memory. Oh, I'm also telling this tool to output screenshots to a directory. Uh, this directory here, it's empty at the moment because I've not run anything. So this behavior driven language just runs through all of these execution steps. They're pretty self-explanatory. Um, I'm recording memory profile writes or access rather to the bitmap memory address. So that's 4000 to 5FFF. So I put some XY coordinate pairs into 6B and then I execute the line draw procedure at B490 and I do it again and I render a C64 video display frame. I then assemble up some extra code, which basically loops through a whole combination of coordinates and puts them into 6B, 6C, 6D and 6E, and then runs the line draw routine. I then assemble that code and then run that code. And all the while the tool is recording all of these memory accesses into the bitmap memory. I then have a more uh, comprehensive line draw test, which basically draws a whole bunch of, uh, well, basically it's a line which moves under its own velocity and it calls that for 10,000 iterations as well. So what I'm trying to do here is that I'm trying to exercise the original line draw code so that all of the uh, code execution pathways are found by the tool. Then I use the configuration options in the tool for optimizing the code as much as possible. So it optimizes uh, the code in terms of uh, program counter, it doesn't try to preserve gaps between code blocks that it doesn't execute, for example. It tries to squeeze all of the code together and also squeeze all of the data together. Um, I went through all of this in a bit more detail in the previous technical video, which you can have a look at because I'll put the link in the video description below. After all of that's done, it then begins the uh, disassembly and then after that it begins the validation phase of the disassembled file. So it runs the same kind of tests that are very similar in terms of code and behavior, but instead of calling the original routine, it calls the labels of the disassembled and reassembled routine because the memory locations are going to be very, very different. So it uses a label for 6B rather than the address of 6B itself, and it calls the label for B490 instead of 
the memory address for B490. And it runs the same code. And then it validates that the reassembled code behaves in terms of memory writes to the bitmap memory. It validates that the code behaves in the same way. Even though the code is different, even though the code has been relocated, it still validates that the memory writes to the bitmap are OK. So here we go. The tool is now displaying a, an emulated C64 bitmap. And it's showing, well, in the first frame, it contains the game data. The next frame is then cleared. I then draw a single debug line, another debug line. And then it runs through all of these combinations. And that's why we're getting the kind of like the, the random dots appearing in the bitmap is that it's rendering lots and lots of EOR drawn lines at different coordinates. So it's trying to exercise a lot of coordinate range to try and get as much as possible code coverage for the tool to actually do its disassembly work. It keeps on pausing occasionally because this tool is written in Java and it's actually allocating a lot of extra memory. There we go, there's the other test which bounces around a line. It's actually really quite quick. So that's why we're not seeing the line bounce fluidly around. Now it's disassembled and now it's reassembled the, the code. And now it's running through the same series of tests to make sure that the lines still write to the same pixels for the same coordinates that are input. And it also does a, an image validation as well from the original code to the new code. So it checks to make sure that the images are exactly the same in terms of what pixels are visible in, in the emulated output. So it's validating specific memory writes in the bitmap, and it's also validating that the image in the emulated output is also the same with the original code and the newly disassembled and reassembled code. All of this is obviously automatically executed, which is why I like using this tool, is because it allows code to be uh, automatically tested for correctness. So there we go. Uh, this test case 25 has basically disassembled and reassembled and validated that the new line draw code can be relocated to anywhere in memory and executed correctly. So now I'm going to run test case 26, which uses the previously disassembled code, but it just runs a slightly better independent demo. So it's running this in a completely new instance, if you like, of an emulated Commodore 64. So if I run it, you can see the lines bounce around. But what I can do is that I can just use this command line here, take the PRG output program file output, compress it, and then just load it into an emulator, any old emulator. Let's, um, where's ICU 64? There it is. Okay, so let's, well, let's do a hard reset. Let's completely clear the memory from any of the original elite game code that was running. There we go. The memory is cleared. You can see that in the graphics bitmap view. And there we go. The original elite line draw has been disassembled, reassembled, put into a different program file. And we can see that all of the code and data now, instead of being, you know, much later on in memory, at B thousand in hex, it's actually right down at the start of memory at four, 400 in hex, 500, 600, 800. Um, and there's the bitmap data. We can see that the rest of the memory is clear. There's the screen color data for the bitmap. And then the rest of the, the high memory is just, you know, default power on, power on state. So there we go. This tool has basically easily uh, generated a nice reusable line draw routine just by disassembling what was in Elite. But it's intelligent profile guided disassembly. So the code is nice and small. The data is nice and minimal. And we know that line draw works because it's been through over 10,000 iterations of drawing lines. So I did notice that when I assembled it up that it the, the assembly is outputting a little warning about oversized addressing mode. And that's because label 6B was referenced before the assembler knew that it was actually in zero page. So let's fix that. There are a few ways of fixing it. We can 
define the label 6b as being in zero page before the rest of the code references it or we can just include the um, line draw routine which uh, which defines label 6b we can include that early on before uh, running any of the other code so we'll just do that we'll move the elite line draw and this shows that the code can just be relocated completely to anywhere as well. Uh, it's quite a good demonstration, I suppose. We'll just include the uh, line draw routine as it's been disassembled, you know, right up at the beginning, just after the jump to real start. Oh yeah, I forgot to put a real start label in um, after the uh, elite line draw inclusion. There we go, there's the error there. It's saying that value is not defined and it's not defined because there we go, real start. So. Um, let's put real start there. So there we go. So that's included the code now for the line draw before the, you know, the bouncing line code, which basically calls the line draw. And there we go. The output from the assembly now indicates that there's no error. What we can do is that we could enable um, verbose nine level. Uh, oops, I put a space. There we go, dash V9 makes the assembler output a lot more verbose. Let's go to the top of the output in the debug. There we go. It says that it's passing source file elite demo two and then elite line draw dot a and then elite demo dot a. And we can see the memory range as well. So if I change directory to there in the output here, we can see, look, uh, there's the memory range 400 in hex to F31. And then the other two memory uh, address ranges are just me using the assembler to uh, clear the bitmap and also set the bitmaps uh, color screen with one zero, which is basically white and black pixel colors. Because it's using high res bitmap, it's not using multicolor bitmap. And I can just assemble and compile that output and then just run it again in the emulator, and then it just works. So there we go, that, that shows that this tool is able to uh, take other kinds of code, not just, you know, SID music files, but also say, for example, the line draw from Elite and produce a, a nice, concise, small, intelligently disassembled uh, line draw routine that can be used in other code relatively easily. So let's have a look at the line draw code that's been output by the tool. There's no hand editing by me whatsoever. This is just disassembly from the tool itself. So you can see that it's generated quite a, a couple of uh, concise labels there for what are obviously maths tables, probably gradients, uh, divide tables maybe, but it's, it's probably using a Bresnan line plot, right? So it's probably just got some kind of like gradient tables in there or something like that. Uh, we also have, oh look, low and high uh, jump tables, probably linking, yeah, linking back to code which draws pixels in different ways or calculates uh, gradients or steps uh, using the different scenarios for, you know, different coordinates and where they are in relation to each other. Uh, so this routine is quite nicely optimized. Uh, it generated quite nice small code at the end of it, right? Uh, there's some self-modified parameters there for, for jumps going, you know, taking the original jump table inputs. So yeah, there we go. So I'll commit this code to source control as well. And I hope you find this tool useful. I think I'm going to find it very useful for reverse engineering stuff. So yes, if you like these kind of technical deep dive videos, then please do consider liking or subscribing to this channel or sending me a super thanks. They are always very much appreciated. Take care, have a great day, evening or night, wherever you are.